What is up, Steelers Nation? Thank you so much for jumping on to another episode of All Steelers Talk. I'm Noah Strackbein, joined by my main man, Stephen Thompson. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talk or subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. The Pittsburgh Steelers, man, what a weekend they had. We thought that the wide receiver talk was dying down, then it was coming back, then it was dying down again. No, it is in full force, and at this point, I think the clock is just ticking to a Brandon Ayuk trade. We have some inside knowledge of what sources inside the Steelers facility are telling all Steelers talk. We're going to get into that, what it means, and how quickly the Steelers could get a trade done if it is happening. On top of another name, this one within the AFC North that the Pittsburgh Steelers are reportedly discussing and considering as another candidate just in case their first target does not work out again wild weekend we're going to dive into it all it was a beautiful weekend here in the berg how you feeling my friend yeah i was gonna say it's a beautiful weekend in the berg did you you know get to experience any of it like how much of it have you actually been able to to enjoy with everything that's going on with the steelers it's it's been it's been craziness but i definitely got outside i made sure that we were good to go i bought a new lawnmower this weekend so you best wow. believe yeah, yeah oh i laced up the new balances and i got out there and i was having a grand old time i turn into straight pops when it comes to yard work like i mm-hmm. am I'm the guy I'm waking up at six in the morning, you know what I mean? Prepping my yard work, eating a good breakfast, and I'm already ready to go by like, I don't know, seven thirty, eight o'clock. I I love it, but I did. I hope you did the same. I did. I did a little bit. I did a little bit. I'm also, you know, spending a lot of time indoors watching the Masters and baseball and everything else on my TV. So it's this is perfect sitting inside and watching sports on TV weather too. Don't forget about that. I agree. I agree. Masters weekend, you could watch anywhere at any time, and I hope everybody got a chance to check that out let's talk some Pittsburgh Steelers Brandon Ayuk is the man of the hour here when it comes to Pittsburgh and the Steelers trade considerations and whether or not they're going to land another wide receiver and heading into the weekend on Friday we're talking about T Higgins and next offseason and at this point the trade talks might be dead then it starts Brandon Ayuk all sorts of social media nonsense flying all over the place the rumors are swirling uh ben albright out in denver sends out a month old text message thread of him talking about the steelers trying to get brandon Ayuk and just tosses the little eye emoji out there and what the hell is going on everybody my when i tell you that my phone we were driving back we were at jillian's parents house we were just picking up some stuff to take to the wedding venue we're coming back jillian's on my phone because i told her i said hey look at the Something might pop off. I just need you to pay attention for me. She's holding it at every two seconds. She's like, dude, you have 40 people texting you right now. Like, what do you do? I was like, nothing, dude. There's just everybody's just asking the same question. Is Brandon Ayuk coming to the Pittsburgh Steelers? I've been told a couple things. I want to dive into that. But first, I want your opinion, how your reactions were as the tweets were going out, the rumors were circulating, and then obviously... We'll dive into I texted you. I let you know what was going on. But before all that, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I was pretty stunned. I mean, I'm at Pitt spring game. I'm writing about, you know, quarterbacks and wide receivers, and I'm having a grand old time. Uh, And then I see this, and I am completely stunned. I mean, because it was not two weeks ago, I think, that we were talking about, you know, uh, John Lynch, 49ers GM, just completely shutting it down. Uh, Any rumor of... The Steelers trading for Brandon Ayuk, the idea of the the 49ers wanting to deal Ayuk, this was dead in the water. And then, you know, we went through the same kind of process with T. Higgins, and and there was no there was smoke but no fire. Uh, yep. And the fire has reappeared. Um, it, it all has picked back up. I was for certain that this was dead, that we weren't going to be talking about this at all, really anymore, the rest of the off season. And I was completely wrong. I, I, this just came completely out of nowhere, and I'm I'm a little stunned that it's it's back on the table. No, I agree. I was I, I thought it was at this point, you know, at some point something's going to happen. But I thought we moved on from Ayuk. I thought we moved on from the massive wide receiver contracts and the Pittsburgh Steelers going to land somebody that they probably couldn't afford. And where's the cap space coming from? So on and so forth. And then, boom, it comes right back like it it never went anywhere. This is what I've been told. I obviously reached out. I said, I have some sources inside the building. I made some phone calls as it's all going down. What sources have told me, team sources have told me, is that the Pittsburgh Steelers, there is nothing imminent right now. 
This is not a done deal. There is still plenty of work to be done. But talks are real. The rumors that are flying around of the Pittsburgh Steelers trying to make something happen with the 49ers, all of that is not just smoke. There is a little bit of fire. Now, they described it as a 50-50 shot. There's still some work. They have to figure out the financial side of it. San Francisco's probably going to have to take on more of Auk's current contract than the Steelers are going to have to. Obviously, there's the future of Auk and the contracts there, and the Steelers have to make sure that their side of the financials is all good. But he also said, word for word, he wouldn't be surprised if it did happen, or it would. he would be surprised if it didn't happen, which immediately my eyes got ginormous and thought, the Steelers are probably going to get Brandon Ayuk. You hear all that? I told you last night, obviously, we went back and forth a little bit. What were your thoughts? Yeah, uh, so I, I think my my initial thought was what happened. You know, what happened in between, you know, uh, uh, owners meetings uh, back at the beginning of April and now that would have changed, you know, what John Lynch said and, and changed yeah. his attitude towards a, a Brandon Ayuk trade. And you know, this is a guy who's going into the final year of of a pretty lucrative contract. This is going to be the most yep. lucrative, uh, you know, uh, as far as salary year of this contract. And he's going to be a free agent next year, kind of getting into his prime. I mean, this might be the last chance that Brandon Ayuk has to land a truly massive NFL contract in the way that wide receiver contracts go this year. It's yep. or these days, um, it could be a hefty chunk of change. So I think the pressure is on Brandon Ayuk. Seems like the pressure's on the 49ers a little bit to keep this expensive, but uh, really, really good core that they have in place. And Brandon Ayuk, it's just when there's a desperation like that, I think, or when the the time is is kind of not on his side in a certain sense, yeah. uh, I, I think there is a little bit of a desperation. And so I, I just you have to imagine that uh, the relationship is getting a little bit soured there because neither side really wants to commit to anything less than their ideal scenario. Uh, and that, I don't know, when you hear about that, it feels like it's hard to, you know, kind of put the toothpaste back in the tube, uh, yep. so to speak, when there's a situation like that. And I, I just can't imagine, I, this just seems like a, you know, a Stefan Diggs scenario. Like this yep. is almost like the exact same thing. It's just a team doesn't want to pay him. Uh, a player wants to be paid what he's worth. And that drives down trade asking price. Like this is only like when they say 50, 50 shot right now, I feel like each passing day that this doesn't happen it's going to get even more likely that it does happen, that it does, that he does get dealt, maybe not necessarily to the Steelers, but the Steelers are certainly going to be one of, if not the most aggressive team going after a guy like Brandon Ayuk. So they have to be as big a contenders as, as anyone who would theoretically be on the trade market for a guy like Ayuk. I agree. I think every day that passes that there is no contract, we are getting closer to a Steelers trade. And I feel like, just like you said, the toothpaste can't go back in the tube, the Stefan Diggs trade. It just, it feels like that has passed. You know, there's the, the trade request stuff that went out and the, the false reports that were clarified, or at least somewhat false. We're not going to call them. We're not going to label them as truly false. But the reports came out about the trade request and how Brandon Ayuk made a trade request to the 49ers. And then Ayuk's agents tweeting out saying that's not true. I don't think maybe a formal trade request was made. But at this point, everything that he's posting on social media, everything that he's saying on podcasts, it's very clear that this guy he wants to get a deal done, and if that deal is in San Francisco, awesome. But if not, he'd like to be on the move, and the Steelers are possibly an option, I guess. How comfortable are you trading? Let's just say the value's okay. You know, if, if I had to guess, I don't think the Steelers are giving up a first-round pick for Brandon Ayuk at this point. I think that it's probably a second-round pick, a Stefan Diggs trade, where you're giving up a second, maybe a later-round pick in this year or next year's draft. Is that okay? Are you okay with that, knowing that the chances are San Francisco's taking on a good chunk of that contract in 2024? The Steelers probably got to pay this guy $30 million plus a year starting next year. Yeah, I, I mean, I am, quite honestly. Um, look, like, we talked about this a while ago, but, like, yeah, I think this is the type of kind of home run-ish swing that you need to take if you're in the Steelers' position. I mean, I... I a trade for IU could be kind of putting would be Art Rooney, it would be Omar Khan kind of putting their money where their mouth is in terms of their comments about the sense of urgency um, regarding, you know, not having won a playoff game in so long. Like 
Yep. It's it's easy to talk that talk, but at some point you got to walk that walk. And while the Steelers have made some really solid moves this offseason and you know they've added they've made some splashes like adding Patrick Queen, going to get a Russell Wilson, they haven't really doled out, you know, big money. They haven't really, you know, committed themselves, you know, beyond Minka yep. and TJ and obviously Highsmith last year uh and Cam Hayward too. But like those were kind of in-house things. Um being aggressive in a way that, you know, you're adding a, a, a superstar ish name, you know, if you consider Brandon Ayuka a superstar, I feel like I would, he's probably, yeah. a, he's a top 10, top five receiver in the league. Yeah. Uh, that's the kind of aggressive move that I think would really tell me, Oh, there, this is more than just talking the talk. They are truly yep. all in on their kind of stated goal of making sure that this year is not like any of the years before um, that this is different. This is back to, this is back to kind of setting a, a championship standard for the Steelers. And I think that's what they would do. Um, so I, 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 I think I would be comfortable for it because I think this is the right time for that. You know, I think this is the right time to really be aggressive to, to open this window all the way, this championship window and, and give it your best shot. I mean, uh, they've made all the other moves. They've made kind of the, the auxiliary moves that you got to do to like build a great team around certain parts and, Let's try to put our put us. Uh, let's try to put the Steelers over the top and get them, you know, a stud wide receiver to pair with George Pickens and and just really go all in on on this year. Yeah, look, look I agree. I, I think that there are so many possibilities with Ayuk. If you're only giving up a second round pick, just if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, second round pick right now is nothing. Like to get a wide receiver, right. a position that you probably draft in the second round, anyways. Who cares? Wide right. receiver contract, thirty million dollars a year boatload of money i get it in two years if you want to pull a stefan diggs trade and say hey pal there you go like you know we'll, we'll ship him somewhere else because we can't afford him." i think that works out just fine like i don't think the steelers are you know they could sign him to a three two or three-year deal excuse me and in two years when they got to resign guys like make a fitzpatrick and i don't know maybe quarterback or whoever they just be like all right sounds good we're just gonna trade brandon Ayuk." Because and we're going to go get a second round pick because that's what the wide receiver market's worth in the NFL. And 30 million dollars at that time will be worth nothing for wide receivers. You know, at that point, guys will be making quarterback money like it'll be. Look, I think that there are so many possibilities with this that you are not tying yourself in the way that I think people expect them to where the Steelers are. Oh, you're going to pay 30 million dollars for a guy and then you're going to be screwed and you can't get a. I get all that. And I think that some names that doesn't make sense for. I think a T. Higgins in 2025, that doesn't make sense for because that's a whole other year down the road. You are you have now set yourself up with a guy for the next, well, it was four years, right? Four years, no, three years, $100 million. It was something crazy like that. Yeah. You've set yourself up now to where you're giving a boatload of signing money away and you're a year later and so on and so You now have Brandon Ayuk this season. You can extend him. His contract won't hit until next season. I get it. But you now have a year to work where you are looking at this and saying, how do we figure it out next offseason? I I don't know how that happens. I'm not Omar Khan, but I could tell you that chances are he could figure it out in a year to make it work. I just I think a move now makes more sense than a move a year from now. And Brandon, I mean, to me, Brandon Ayuk is is totally like worth it. He's worth a first round pick, let alone a second round pick. Yeah, and I mean, like, if it's a second round pick, like, honestly, who cares? Like, that's who cares saying. if you resign him beyond that? Like, that's the thing. Like, exactly. I would absolutely, I will one thousand percent trade a second round pick for one year, Brandon Ayuk. That I, yep. I think that's a pretty obvious, obvious move too. Like, you don't even have to resign him beyond, you know, twenty twenty four if you don't want to. Um, nope. I, and like, that's my point about like going all in on this year, like. You've made yep. every other move that signals this is our year. We are opening the championship window right now. You're and not trying quite, to win it. Right. It, you're not quite – like, I don't think you're quite there with, I mean, who are the – like, you know, Baltimore or, uh, you know, Kansas City or someone in terms of, you know, as far as actual, like, you know, championship potential, winning the Super Bowl potential. Yeah. This move puts you in that upper echelon. Like, I, I, yep. I think it does. Like, I, I truly, truly think it does. I said that before when we were talking about him. Uh, about Brandon Ayuk the, the first time around, and I, I still believe that, that this is a kind of game-changing move. This is kind of a, a not league-altering move, but at least, you know, AFC-altering move, you know? It yeah. it probably puts it uh, 
definitely puts you ahead of Cleveland, I would say, yes. in terms of like general projections. Yes. I think Cincinnati's a little more complicated, but you're you're right up there with Cincinnati and uh and the Ravens in terms of like total talent, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Uh it's uh, to me that would be a no-brainer. Like you you pick you pick in the first round looking for guys who will be as productive as Brandon Ayuk yeah. is over you the course pick of in his the career. top 10 looking right. for guys who are going to be as productive as Brandon Ayuk. Yeah. Right. And so like in the second round are you kidding me? Like you you hope one of your draft picks can become Brandon Ayuk, and it, yeah. Brandon Ayuk is Brandon Ayuk right now, man. So I, yes. I I don't think you have to overthink this at all. And like, I think looking too far down the road will just put your head into a knot that you don't. If you're the Steelers, that you don't really need to to do right now. Just yep. pay a good player. What like pay a good like especially like second round pick 49ers taking on some of that money. Like, yep. Worry about 2025 and in 2025 quite honestly yep. like that's this isn't as big a deal to me as as it is to to get a playmaker in the building right now who could probably maybe put you over the top yep uh, look at you're dead you're dead on you are dead on and i i every time i get like something big information wise the first person I always hear about it is my father every single time <laughs> i shoot him a text hey hey look at this is what i just heard and i texted him and he immediately texts me back and he said contenders. And I said, yeah, like that's yeah. that's what it, and he's not a Steelers fan. Like that's what it makes them. Is you you get Brandon Ayuk, you're spot on. You are now like a real right now the Steelers are Super Bowl contenders. You get Brandon Ayuk, like you're there. You're gonna have people on ESPN who are putting you up there and saying, My guess is the Steelers win the Super Bowl. There's gonna be a serious change in your Vegas book to going and winning a super like you've just set yourself up with so many options you've two quarterbacks a running game a good offensive line you still have all the draft picks in the world including two third ones that if you want to move up and go get a center or something in the second round you could probably make that happen they're just that the options are endless the Steelers have so much potential they've done so well like this is another move that if it does happen and you got to guess that it's going to happen for the right price. You just got to give Omar Khan even more credit because this dude just comes away with ridiculous, ridiculous moves. That sets everybody up, not even just now, but long term. And where the Steelers are today is is crazy. Brandon Ayuk makes them like real serious. You're you're dead on like could pull it off Super Bowl. Right now, it's hopeful. Super Bowl hopefuls. Brandon Ayuk, you're like, this could happen. This the yeah. steel. There's no missing links. You know, you could start Dan Moore and Nate Herbig, and you'd still be like, I feel pretty good about this team. Yeah, well, F it, Brandon Ayuk is down there somewhere, like, or, you know, That's George Pickens. Saying. Or George right, Pickens like, is down there somewhere. Just <laughs> right, throw the ball up. Somebody's coming down with it. Like, yeah. Right. It'd be so. And then Jet sweeps for days with Calvin Austin. You still right. got Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. Hopefully, Pat Fryer turns into something. And we haven't even entered the draft. We don't even yeah. know who they've come up with in the draft, but chances are they're going to add somebody. Could you imagine if the Steelers walked into the season with George Pickens, Brandon Ayuk, and Malachi Corley? Like, yeah. or Lad McConkey or Roman Wilson? Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> you yeah. just took it from the, possibly the worst wide receiver core of the NFL to potentially the best. It's just, you make it happen. That's what we're hearing. And it sounds like it's a move that, again, Sources say they'd be surprised if it didn't happen. So keep your eyes peeled. I'm sure the news cycle. As for when, I have no idea. And they didn't have any idea. <laughs> but keep your news, keep your eyes peeled because it's going to happen. And we've always joked it's going to yeah. happen late. Three in the morning on a Wednesday. Uh, yep. You know, everyone's going to be asleep except for literally Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport. And yep. that's how you find yep. out. Yep. There will be four people who will be on the phone, or four people who will be on Twitter at that time. And it will be Ian Rappaport. Adam Schefter, John Lynch, and Omar Khan. They'll be the only he Mike Tomlin will wake up to the text like the rest of us. Hey, yeah. got Brandon Ayuk. So could imagine that's gonna happen. There's another wide receiver conversation to have. According to 93.7, the fans, Andrew Filipponi, T. Higgins has been a topic of conversation for the Pittsburgh Steelers this offseason. Excuse me. We've talked a lot about T. Higgins and a possibility that he comes to Pittsburgh. Obviously, you got the AFC North thing, which is probably going to be an eh, T. Higgins said yesterday at his youth camp that he expects to play in Cincinnati. I mean, is T. Higgins even like a real thing? Like, even if they are talking about it, what are those conversations? Uh, like, should anybody get excited that if Brandon Ayuk doesn't work out, T. Higgins is a possibility for the Steelers? I don't think so. I think that that'd be getting your hopes up for really 
not a very good reason in my book, yeah. quite honestly. I mean, you bring up the AFC North uh, thing like that. and uh, But the other side of it is that the T. Higgins contract situation, I think, is a lot more urgent than it is, is than it is for the IU thing. I mean, there's a way to make Brandon Ayuk affordable for the Steelers. There is not really an option for, to make T. Higgins affordable. Um, yeah. I mean, playing on the franchise tag, that's a boatload of money. And then you add in whatever extension you might want to sign him to or that he would demand – uh, and that's quite a bit of that's a quite a bit to give up, and that's on top of, you know, what you might have to trade to convince an AFC North rival to give you, what like one of their one of their best players, you yeah. know, easily like they're one of their top two or three on the offensive say, maybe side of the top ball. Three players, if you include Joe Burrow on that list. Yeah. Uh. So you're, you'd really be asking for a lot from them, and I think the Bengals would ask for a lot in return, and it, it just all add up to a little bit too much for me. And just like you put, you put T. Higgins and and Brandon Ayuk side by side, and you put like everything that they would cost, everything that you'd have to go through to acquire either player, and I, I I'm not even looking at T. Higgins unless I no. know that there's absolutely no chance of getting Brandon Ayuk. That's it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to to me to add T Higgins versus well like especially when another guy like that's always going to be the comparison now is just Ayuk versus Higgins you know the Steelers need one of them if they want to be a real contender and yeah. only one I think really makes sense at this point I I don't even think T Higgins I think T Higgins is phenomenal but yeah Brandon Ayuk like makes you like a real this is crazy T Higgins is like wow that's a really good move that's a really mm-hmm. You got a really good wide receiver. And I, I'm not trying to like downplay T Higgins. I just think T Higgins has been a number two behind a phenomenal number one, like one of the best number ones in football with an incredible quarterback. And don't get me wrong. Brandon Ayuk has done a lot of the same, but Brandon Ayuk has made a lot out of a, you know, at sometimes a little like a Jimmy Garoppolo type situation, a Trey Lance type situation. Debo Samuels was not, I mean, even this past season, Debo was not Debo. He was not. He did not have the the Debo year that everybody anticipated that he did. I I think that you know Brandon Ayuk is, for years. Brandon Ayuk has been like one of the most undervalued wide receivers in the NFL, and I think T Higgins is phenomenal. But T Higgins might max out as the number, the best number two, like just in terms of where they where they are currently right now. Your guessing that T Higgins can be a number one that you could be the guy you know for certain Brandon Ayuk is your number one you know for for fact that if you traded for Brandon Ayuk he's a guy that's going to come in here and just be a superstar right off the bat and he's probably looking for something like that you know he's probably that's what he wants and T Higgins wants an opportunity to do the same maybe he will I, I just think that like neck and neck it just it I'm putting Brandon Ayuk talent, talent and performance wise, a, a little bit, not a ton, a little tiny bit above T. Higgins, and just cost wise, you're spot on. Twenty one million dollars to keep T. Higgins this season under the franchise tag. You could obviously sign him before I think June fifteenth, but you're going to sign him for more than twenty one million dollars, which means that you're paying him more than twenty one million dollars this season, which completely eliminates the whole thing with Brandon Ayuk of it go all in this season cool only now you got to come up with 25 million dollars i just I, I don't know i don't i don't think it's i don't think it's the best move for the steelers I, and i think it'd be a good move but if there's real traction with Ayuk, i don't even want to have the conversation to higgins yeah yeah absolutely like i mean to your point about you know Ayuk versus higgins and their situation like Brandon Ayuk put up thirteen, like more than thirteen hundred yards on a team that yeah. also had Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, and Debo Samuel. Like even yep. if Debo took a back a step back last year, it was partially because Brandon Ayuk had the most insane year that he's had of his entire career. Uh, yep. And this guy is like in the middle of his prime right now. Um, it's yep. not, it's not we're waiting on him to develop. Like that's the other thing. Like T Higgins, like he's still a work in progress. You know, like even yep. if he's really good right now. Uh, he's still got a ways to go before he, you know, hits the ceiling. Like right now, Brandon Ayuk is Brandon Ayuk, and he is who he is. One of the best receivers in the NFL. There's no, there's no like, there's no guessing about it. You know, like nope. there's no guessing about what Brandon Ayuk could be on this team. You know, like he, he would be like he would be the number one, right? Like he's yeah. not, yeah, yeah. No, like definitely. George, like definitely. as much as we all love George, like he's not, he's not there yet. He's not Brandon no. Ayuk level. Uh just yet i think he can he can get there but he's not yeah, there yeah. right yet so um 
like you, you you've seen Brandon Ayuk be a number one on a winning team at that too. Uh, and you just haven't seen that same thing from T Higgins. So the idea, I mean, and Tegan's like costs you more. Like that's yep. the crazy thing. It's like, I, it, it's just wild. Like you put guys in certain situations, it becomes less about their talent and about their production and more about, Oh, well who, you know, who got paid last Who you know, which wide receiver was signed before them. Did they get put on the franchise tag? Did they get asked out? Are they under contract? Like, all these weird things start getting getting mixed up and, and you get into a situation where Brandon Ayuk is going to cost you a lot less than a T Higgins. That's that's pretty crazy. That's a, exactly that's exactly you are paying just to break it down. very Exactly what you said, but just to break it down in a very simple sentence here is you are paying you are underpaying Brandon Ayuk in 2024, drastically underpaying Brandon Ayuk, and you are taking a risk to not overpay T Higgins in 2024. That's as simple as it gets. You are like even at fourteen million dollars, Brandon Ayuk is a steal. Like you just traded Deontay Johnson for Brandon Ayuk, and it didn't cost you any money. Like that's right. that's wild. Whereas in T Higgins, you start off on a ceiling where you're like eh, twenty million bucks for T Higgins. Is that are you feeling really good about that? I don't know. I don't know just yet. And I think the potential's there. And you always you. I mean, we had this conversation with Deontay Johnson. You pay guys for what's coming, not what is to get a guy who is already here and you're paying him way less than what it is. I mean, that's as good as it I just don't that there's no comparison. And there's other, like, I think, I think if it's not a Uke, you take a step back and you go right. like, what, who are the other options that are like lesser than these guys? And like, I tossed out Devonte Adams. I think Devonte Adams could be a great move for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't think he's as good as Brandon Ayuk, And I, I think that outside of him, maybe, I would I would consider like the second tier guys like the Cortland Suttons and the the John Mechies and the Noah Browns and the those kind of guys before I went out and tried to make a move for a T Higgins that you know T Higgins never really made a ton of sense to me in the first place it just and and again like what the Bengals are going to ask for they're not going to be like oh second round pick for t- all yours yeah. pal no chance yeah. be like all right we'll take three firsts and. Your second born child. We don't even want your first. Give us your second. Right. Well, and like, and Higgins, like, I think the difference is crazy because Higgins, like, hasn't really been, like, a headache for the for the Bengals, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, this is not a guy who I think is, like, desperate to get out of Cincinnati or anything. Like, it, no. it seems very, it seems much more amicable than what the 49ers are going through with Ayuk. And yes. that, like, I, I don't think either side is helping each other out, but you know, no. Higgins isn't like tanking his value or anything, you know, like there aren't leaked reports about him wanting out or anything like that. Like that changes the narrative quite a bit. And that changes the value by extension. Uh, if yep. you just know that that guys don't want to be in a certain place. Um, I, I like, that's the thing. Like, do you think like this could last like with Ayuk? Like, do you think it could last all the way through like into training camp? Like, is he going to hold out, hold in? Like, how, like how long oh, do you I think would this imagine could last? Ayuk, I would, I, I would imagine Ayuk, definitely holds in or holds out would 100% think that that's what happens. Whereas, mm-hmm. and if he comes to Pittsburgh, he's not going to hold out. You know, they're going to have those conversations with them already. They're going to have the conversations before the trade. Like, Hey, look, this is where we expect to be. That's why. That's why when it comes to like, when it's going to happen, I have no idea because I think it could come right down to the final hour of the NFL draft. I can think it could come down to between day one and day two of the NFL draft where that's when they make a move. But I wouldn't be surprised if, if for some crazy reason this went into July and or the end of July, August, and the Steelers are finally like, all right, yeah, if you look at he's not gonna play for you, so you might as well you might as well just send him to us and we'll give you a second round pick next year. I think that all of those are real possibilities. Um but it's it's uh I I just I don't have no idea what a timeline would be, but I don't expect him to play. I, unless they're going to sign him to a contract and they've done this before with Debo and they had one other one where it was a real late San Francisco had another one where it was real late right down to the wire hard no nose this is a negotiation was it was it Trent Williams was it an offensive lineman or am I it might have been Trent Williams it might have been Trent remember. Williams either way I don't I, remember. I remember what you're talking about though I don't yeah. remember the actual player but I know what you're I know what you're referencing yeah, and they've done this before, and I and they can pull it off again. I, I don't doubt that they can't pull it off again, but I I I wouldn't imagine he shows up to training camp on day one if he does not have a new deal. And that's when, if it doesn't happen to, like, don't let it die. Like, it's not yeah. the hope, the dream of Brandon Ayuk for everybody who's dreaming about it. 
it's not dead if the draft comes and goes. It's still very, very much. It's alive until a contract is inked in San Francisco. I mean, yeah, someone literally, a 49ers executive literally said it was dead two weeks ago, and it yep. was not dead. So, I, yeah, I don't think he can count this out really at any point. No, no, no. I would, I, it's, it's alive. And again, quote unquote, would, would be surprised if it didn't happen. So, we're just kind of waiting and we'll see when it does happen. We are about to head out, but first, uh, some news happened on the show that uh, are during the show that I thought you would uh, find very fascinating being a, you know, all the fans like to make fun of you in the comments about how you being a uh, growing that's up. Good a to know. I, usually, fan. I usually don't check the comments. So that's you shouldn't good. because you. it's everybody just kind of ripping on you for being a, a Patriots fan, which is bad. I mean, they're mostly ripping on me for just existing. So, you know, it's good. And then the positive ones, we love you guys. <laughs> You're our favorite people. You keep it up. You guys keep it up. That's uh... yeah. Yeah. Um, during the show, something was uh, definitely leaked on social media, on Snapchat, unfortunately. Juju Smith-Schuster's junk made its way to Juju Smith-Schuster's Snapchat story. Not on purpose, it doesn't appear, oh, but no. it is all over Twitter right now. And, um, yeah, so that's wide receiver one in New England right now. Hope you're enjoying it. First of all, Kendrick Bourne is wide, <laughs> or whoever, you know. Marvin Harrison the third or whatever. Uh, wow, that is very unfortunate. Uh, that's, yeah. you know, people like I, I don't know, like you don't like this to happen to anyone, but like I don't think Juju is like a bad, a bad person. Like this is nah. this is unfortunate. This is that's a tough one. There's a girl in the seat with like in the car with him. Looks like maybe his girlfriend. I don't know. I don't know who he's sending the picture to, but it's out there. Junk is all over Twitter <sighs> right now. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. And then because that stuff never goes away, man. That's never, never. Antonio Brown's already grabbed onto it. We'll be hearing about this. For, of course he did. Yeah. Yeah. 30 years, 30 years. We'll be hearing about Juju Smith, Schuster's junk popping up on Snapchat. So with that, we're heading out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everybody gets that image out of their head and also enjoys another beautiful day in the Berg. Thank you for jumping on to another episode of All Steelers Talk. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash All Steelers Talk. Check us out anywhere you get your podcast. And as always, check all our work out at allsteelers.com and inside the Panthers.com. Again, I apologize for scarring everybody at the end of this episode, but I hope that you got a laugh out of it as well. It's beautiful outside, so I hope you're enjoying another beautiful day in the Berg. Peace. <laughs>